Welcome to Bunny Fish Crafts. I'm your host Heather, known as Bunny Fish on Ravelry Instagram and YouTube. Today is Monday, the 18th of April, 2016, and this is episode 175, pre-summer. Grab some sticks and string and come sit with me. So some people would call pre-summer spring, but um, they're incorrect. Like last week was spring with the rain and the cooler temperatures. Today it's um, very sunny and 80 degrees. That's disgusting. But I'm not going to call it summer yet because I'm sure we're going to have another cold spike somewhere in here. I'm not ready. Everybody else around here is super ready for summer. I'm not. I don't want the hot and the sun. And Mara cannot. She cannot summer, apparently. Anyway, um, how was your week? Good? Our week was pretty good. We survived spring break. We went to the zoo on Wednesday, which was super fun. Um, we didn't really do a lot of other things. I don't know. Mostly we hung out. The kids played outside a lot. I cleaned a decent portion, which is kind of impressive since both children were home, but kind of less impressive because that meant that Mara was entertained by someone who was not me. So that makes sense. Um, yeah, I mean, that was basically my week. Anyway, knitting stuff. The Small Things Craft Along will be starting next month and will go through June. So I didn't start the chatter thread, but I plan to. It's on my list of things. It's officially on my habit RPG list, so it has to happen, right? I almost never delete anything off the list without just doing it. So that should happen today. Um... There's already been some excitement about it. People talking about their possible plans. I will hopefully be making a hex puff a day and maybe extra mitered squares or extra um, burn raising squares. We'll see. But again, any object that is finished counts. So single socks, entire blankets. Um, modular pieces, everything counts. As long as it's a functional or, yeah, as long as it's a functional thing by itself, it counts. Rules will be in the thread. Um, you have to be a member of the group to win. And yeah, there will be rules. I'll talk about that more maybe next week, maybe the following week. I don't know. Right before the knit along happens, I'll talk about it more. I didn't finish anything this week, but I finished three things last week, so I'm not too worried about it. I did make a lot of progress on the Mystic Spiral Socks, though, patterned by Josh Ricks. And here is the first one that was almost finished last week. I was in this short row section up here, so I just finished the short row, worked a little bit more leg, and then did the cuff. Um, I did the cuff the non- muddying way for stripes when you're doing ribbing. I did one by one rib. I don't remember what the pattern calls for. Maybe one by one. But when the colors changed, I just knit that entire first round, just knit, and then did the ribbing on the subsequent rounds. So it doesn't really affect the stretchiness or anything. It just makes the lines clean instead of muddying them up. But anyway, here's the first sock. And here is the second sock. So I have foot diagonals going in opposite directions. The stripes are pretty well lined up on this first sock. Um, on the first diagonal, you can see that the, the beginning and ending of that striping area is not super duper clean. And whatever. It got much more clean on the upper stripe and on this bottom stripe down here. I am in the heel. Not quite halfway, but close. I mean, I could have just worked for another couple minutes and been to the halfway point on the heel. But I decided to record instead. <laughs> and I'll definitely finish the heel today, and I don't work today, so probably get through the... Um, the next section of the leg. So just knitting straight, 
before I go into the next short row section. Hoping to get that finished today. These will definitely be finished this week sometime. I'm working very diligently. The yarn that I'm using is Stray Cat Socks in the Electric Avenue colorway. It comes packaged in this cute little box. It's all the way from New Zealand. Josh gave it to me. And um, it comes wound in a ball. The outer layers of the ball are wound very cool stripies. And then once you get to the middle, it's not, but that's okay because that doesn't matter. It makes really cool stripies when you knit it. And I'm knitting this on US size 1, 2.25 millimeter needles. I had a moment this week of a little bit of panic. I finished the first sock at work and somewhere I misplaced my circular knitting needle. So I started the second sock. I was like, it's no big deal because I start the, the socks on double points. And then once I get to the main circumference, then I put them on the nine inch circular. Well, I finished the toe and I still couldn't find the nine inch circular. And I was like, but I need it. So I looked all the places that I thought it could be. I cleaned out my car all the way. I looked through my knitting needle holder area because Becca had gotten one, a nine inch circular, and then she gave me all of her knitting stuff. And I was like, well, maybe I put it away in my needles. No. I looked in the bag of yarn and stuff from Becca. No, there wasn't one there. So I couldn't find my spare one and I couldn't find my original one. So I had to go buy one, obviously, because I need to finish these socks. And um, my gauge is just different between between different types of needles, double points and nine inch circulars and magic loop length circulars. My gauge is just, just different. It just is. So I had to have a nine inch circular. So I went to Joanne's and I got a nine inch circular. So it's kind of a new thing, but not really a new thing because I just had to replace a needle that I lost. <sighs> oh well. Anyway, these socks are going very well. Second sock is about halfway done. It's like two minutes away from halfway done. So finished pair next week. I also, okay, so I know this is not a shock to you, but I realized just how many pairs of socks I was working on as I was writing my show notes. And I was like, wow, it's a lot going on on sock needles. I don't know why I just realized it this morning, but I did. Second up is Josie by Jenna Meyer. This is Science Monkey Mercantile Faraday Sock in the Rosalind Franklin's Overexposed Photograph Color. And I was at this Shibi. I did my two rounds every day and i um, making progress slowly but surely. I'm almost finished with the first pattern repeat and then I will have one more pattern repeat in the cuff. So it's going. Are you guys getting bored of seeing it? Uh, this is the um, the problem with not being a monogamous knitter is that some projects don't make a ton of progress. And then I worry that you guys are going to get bored seeing the same thing over and over again on the podcast. But there is the pattern-ish and the yarn is so, so pretty. I don't know. I'm, it's in my yarn bowl. I decided today that I'm going to show you all the bags and things that things are in. So that's sitting in my yarn bowl. I'm working on also a pair of tube socks. They're not for a child, but they are for someone with really small feet. So my only modification to my normal tube sock, two. So I have directional toes. So they slant uh, anatomically correctly, kind of, although you can see they're both going in the same direction. It doesn't matter because I'm not putting in heels. I am, did you just hear that? That was my cat. He's sleeping under my desk and he is snoring. He has allergy issues. Anyway, so the other modification that I made is instead of doing this 40 rounds, which is what I've been doing for my kids' socks, I did 50 for this first section. I'm going to do all the subsequent sections as 40. 
but just that first main foot part I made a little bit longer and I have a single round of ribbing on because I got to the end of the just stocking up portion and I was like if I don't put in the first round of ribbing I'll forget that that's what I'm doing for like five rounds and then there'll be extra rounds of just stocking up and I don't want that. So last night I put in a round of ribbing. The yarn that I'm using is Plymouth Yarn Company Happy Feet in some numbered colorway. I don't know what it is. And I hand wound this ball because my ball winder wasn't working at the time, but it's working okay now. And I'm keeping the yarn in this Sewn by Lindsay pink tetrahedron bag, which is super loved. The tag is getting a little weird. And I think I'm going to replace the handle because it's kind of, it's never going to come clean now. I carry this to work. I carry this all over the place. Carry it to the zoo. Carry it everywhere. So I think I'm going to replace the handle and continue loving on this bag. You can't see it, but on the inside there are ink stains all down here because I am slightly abusive to this bag in the best possible way. I love this bag. It holds so much stuff. One day last week I went to work with these socks and both of the Mystic Spiral socks and the yarn for my barn raising square all in here and a pair of leg warmers because it was a little bit chilly and I wasn't sure if it was going to be warm or cold plus all of my random stuff in that I keep in my bag so chapstick pain medicine gift cards probably a granola bar Yep, there's a granola bar in there. Ooh, some chapstick and lipstick. I think I already said chapstick. Some gum, my sunglasses. So this bag holds a ton of stuff. If you're looking for a bag that's really small but can hold a ton of stuff, I would recommend the tetrahedron bags. The other, the last sock that I'm working on is Steampunkery by Heatherly. Walker. I'm knitting it using 716 knit, 716 sock in the um, Hell Hath No Fury Like a Woman Scorned for Sega colorway, which is a white background with speckles of purple and pink and blue-ish and it flecks a little bit of orange but not a ton of orange. Um, I am just past the cuff. I'm only doing two rows a day. Again, quota knitting. But I don't need these socks to be finished until the end of June because they're my second quarter socks. And I want them to make progress but I don't want them to be my focus. So I am just doing two rows a day, so you'll be seeing a lot of these too, but whatever. Again, beautiful colorway. And uh, I'm working on those diligently. I finished the cuff. They are knit flat for, I don't know, I think maybe the whole leg. I didn't read ahead in the pattern because that would be silly, but I think maybe the whole leg is knit flat at least a lot of the leg because you use buttons. So I'm going to just show my other new thing right now. You use buttons to close up the leg and it can fold open and over. So the buttons that I got yesterday, I was at knitting and my knit group, if you've been watching for a while, um, you know that we decided to do the Frankenstein socks together. I'm the only person who finished so far. Um, the other two ladies had definitely the lower tubes to finish, and one of them, I think, had another section to do on the sock. I don't remember for sure. Anyway, Claire showed up yesterday, and she was like, I finished all the pieces, so I'm hoping you can help me start putting it together. I was like, yeah, I can do that. 
Um, she didn't have any scissors. Not a problem because I have a pair of scissors in my car just in case. You never know, you might need scissors. And I didn't have any in my bag because I wasn't planning on finishing anything at knitting. And I could just carry around a notions bag with everything in it, but I don't. I pretty much, most of the time I work at my desk, so my notions bag lives on my desk. And when I'm going to knitting, I just grab what I need for knitting. Or I just throw what I need for a particular project in a particular bag. I don't know why I don't take my notions bag with me everywhere, probably because it's kind of heavy-ish, and then I would have to carry it. Anyway, she didn't have a darning needle. She's never had one. We've been going to the same knitting group for like, I don't know, two, three years now? For a long time. And she's finished several projects. I was like, how do you not have a darning needle? She's like, oh, I just always use a crochet hook to weave in ends. And she knits her socks. Um, she just does the, like, the Kitchener using a knitting needle. Because you can do that. So... She's never had a darning needle and she was trying to sew the parts together using a knitting needle to like pull the strands through loops and stuff. And I let her do that for about 10 minutes before I was like, okay, this is ridiculous. Joanne's is like five minutes away. Let's just go. They were having a sale. I had a whole bunch of coupons. So, or they were having a promotion and I had a whole bunch of coupons. So I was like, well, let me look at the buttons. Maybe I'll find something. I found these fabulous buttons. I think that they will look fabulous in the sock. What the, I have the first two buttonholes done, so that's how it's going to go. I'm kind of thinking that while I have the buttons and I'm just starting, I might just sew on the buttons immediately. Like, I have two buttonholes now, so I may as well sew on both of those buttons. That way I don't have to go back later and try to count girder ridges and make sure I'm placing the buttons in the correct place. So I might be sewing on some buttons today, thinking about it. No promises on that. And all of the socks that I'm knitting today are in US 1 2.25 millimeter needles. I'm using a variety of needle types. I have two pairs of Haya Haya's, one pair of Addy Sock Rockets, and one pair of Clover Bamboo 9 inch circulars going right now. I also worked on the market bag. I don't remember where I was last week. I don't think that I had started the second tier of the edging. I think I was in this first part where it was still single crochet and then I went into double crochet and now I am doing treble crochets with a chain one space in between to make the sides of the market bag. Can you see that? I think you can see that. I don't know. So it's getting pretty tall. It's over six inches tall on the side. I think I'm shooting for maybe 15 inches. I don't know. We'll see if it gets to, you know, 12 inches. Once it gets to 12 inches, I'll figure it out. I might go to 15. I might go to 18. It'll be whatever looks right and not too ridiculously huge. And then I'll start. Then I'll, then I'll do the top border and the strap and stuff. So making good progress trying to continue working on this because it's not a project that I love working on, but it's something that I committed to, so I'm plowing away at it. I worked on the Care Bear cross stitch, so I think it's been a while since I've shown you what the Care Bear is supposed to look like. My Care Bear does not look exactly like that, but pretty similar. Do do do. Here it is. I have finished the balloon, I started, well, I worked on filling in the arm some more, and I filled in the cloud. So this is not going to be the most exciting thing to show you from here on out, because I only have three colors left to work with. 
I only have the blue to fill in the body, the white for the cloud, and this gray outline color. So I have to finish outlining over on the side of the cloud and then go back and cross all of this gray because I haven't crossed most of it. And then I'll be finished with that color. So it's still a bit of stitching. I, this might be done by the end of the month, but definitely won't be done next week. But um, I'm working away at it and I'm pretty pleased with how it's turning out. I think it's super cute. Look at that little face. I'm pretty happy with it. And I'm pretty happy with the changes that I made to it. So the mouth is a little bit different. The balloon is a totally different color. The cloud is totally different colors. Because I had children who opened the kit and, um, and threw the floss everywhere. It is what it is. I am working away still on the painted tiger, spinning diligently every day. So this might look a little different. I am pretty sure that I had more or less on the spindle last week. I don't know. I can't remember. But I think it was also a different color last week. So I'm in the lighter purple color. And I'm getting pretty close to the end of this braid. I mean, not super close. It's not like this week finishing. But look at that. It's not very much to go. But I did have to wind off my next, my last single from my spindle. So you can see it's got the pink on the outside and then it goes to purple on the inside. And I'll be pulling from the outside to ply. And how exciting! My spindle no longer has any visible yellow. Can you see the yellow in the middle? Yeah, just a little bit. So there's the yellow in the middle. It's now all this dusty, rosy pink color on the outside. Yay! So I'm making good progress on that. And that is my, um, that's my resolution project for the month. So I'm continuing on with that. And that is in the, the single that I'm spinning is in this beautiful bag that was made for me by Jerry. And I love it. The ply, the ball that I'm plying from, so it's this right here, look at how small it is now, is in a little crocheted wristlet that I won from the Ravelinic Games or Tour de Fleece. I can't remember which one. I was in a group that everybody donated prizes and everybody won a prize. Basically, if you finished, you won a prize. And I picked that one. And I forgot to mention the project bag that my steampunkery socks are in. This is a kitchen counter crafter single shot bag. And I love it. Got little foxes and all the autumnal things, which make my heart sing because even though we're going into summer, I am already ready for autumn. I just don't do hot. I don't like it. I don't. And I don't really like sun either. I get sunsick. So, like, we went to the zoo on Wednesday, and that was fine. But after being out in the sun for about five hours intermittently, we went into different um, houses at the zoo. And I stuck to the shade a lot. I was wearing sunglasses, drinking a lot of water. I just get headaches from being in the sun and just from it being sunny. Like if I'm going to be in my dining room downstairs for a long period of time during the day, during spring and summer, I have to wear sunglasses in my house because it's just too bright. We have a huge picture window. And if I'm going outside at all, I just keep my sunglasses on my head the entire day and throw my sunglasses on as soon as I step outside the door because I get headaches from the sun. Not so much during the winter, but definitely during the summer when it's really, really strong. It's not very fun. Anyway, what was I talking about? I don't know. Something knitting related, maybe. Or maybe just that I want it to be autumn. I also made modular progress this week. This is White Birch Fiber Arts in the 8020 
merino nylon base in the I Eat Me Spinach colorway. And you can see it's actually a self-striping. It was kind of hard to see in my Raptor socks, but um, I knew that they were self-striping. So anyway, here it is. You can see that it's really, really self-striping and it is gorgeous. I love this colorway. I'm definitely going to have to get more white birch fiber arts. I think I have two more skeins in my stash, but I'm not 100% certain. But I love, love, love the square so much. And I also love, love, love the square that I put in my mitered square blanket. So I now have the first quadrant, maybe not the first quadrant. I might make it a little bigger. I'm not sure yet. I'm going to start the second quadrant of the blanket and probably make at least the second quadrant, but maybe all four quadrants before I decide whether or not I need to make the, the panel in the middle bigger. Anyway, here are my mitered squares, all 25 of them. They are so cute. I love them. Super excited for this blanket. Someday, someday it will be a full blanket. In case you're new, I already made a mitered square blanket, but my daughter claimed it. And I'll be talking also about another long-term blanket, but my son claimed it. So now I'm making two blankets for myself, which is this barnizing square. It is, I'm using a free pattern. It's linked in the show notes and I knit these on size two needles which is 2.75 millimeters. I'm knitting my mitered square blanket on US 1 2.25 millimeter needles. The first one that I knit, I knit on US 2s and it's nice, but I kind of wanted something a little more dense for me. So the squares are smaller because I'm using the same stitch count. And I'm actually making this, um, I'm not making it just mitered squares. I'm making it mitered squares but with a pattern to it which I haven't talked about on the podcast but I stole someone else's idea and I'll talk about it more later when this becomes more of a thing um where, why was I even telling you that I don't even remember very tangential and half thoughts going on today but anyway, here's the first quadrant and I love it. Oh yes, I remember. So the whole point of this blanket project is to use yarns that only have blue or green or both in them, but it doesn't have to be mainly blue or green. It just has to have those colors in it. So you can see it's got some colors that are obviously blue and green and some that are leaning more toward pink or more toward red but still have blue and green in them and that's what ties this all together. This is the first blanket that I've made um, using scrap yarns that has been with that particular like a particular color palette in mind. I also made seven hexapuffs um, one celebratory using the sparkly white yarn. It's just inside out. And then this one, I started with this, this color yarn, ran out, just pulled another scrap and then realized that I actually had more of that same color yarn. I don't think it would have been enough to finish the hexapuff completely though. So it doesn't matter. So it has a random different yarn in the middle some two random scraps together, some scraps of 716 knit. All of all three colors are from Jenna. I just, I don't know what they are and I know they were all leftover bits from things, except this one is my hormones don't rage on the top. 716 solo, red, the same stuff that I used in Pikachu and Lion Brand Sockies in Red Hots. So I am now up to 512 Hexapuffs, which is exciting. And I only have two Hexapuffs that were made by other people to join into the blanket. And then it's only going to be Hexapuffs that I've made. 
or not to join into the blanket, to join into pods to then eventually join into the blanket. I will talk about that more later. The pods thing. I've mentioned it a few times on the podcast, so if you're interested in that and you haven't heard about it, uh, just mention it somewhere in one of the threads and I'll talk about it soon, but I'm sure I'll bring it up eventually again. What else? Hmm. Okay, just what I'm reading. So I am reading still Winter, which is the last book in the Lunar Chronicles by Marissa Meyer. I have about 250 pages left to go. So I read a decent chunk of it this week. It is a really long book though. It's 800 something pages. I'm enjoying it greatly. It's the last book in the series, so I don't want to talk about it too much, but I did talk a lot about it last week. So if you are new, go check out last week's episode to find out more about the entire storyline. And I'm also listening to the, it is Sunblock, the Dresden Files book number six, as read by James Marsters. It is Blood Rites, and I'm highly enjoying that. The Dresden Files is is a, um, a series about a wizard named Harry Dresden, and he solves stuff. He's a private investigator. And, um, there are vampires. Predominantly, this book is about vampires, but there's also, there are also books that are predominantly, stop, about fairy court. That's sunblock making all that noise. No, thank you. Okay, I guess I get some sunblock. Um, also about werewolves. That's why you need sunblock on. Thanks. And now I'm not going to get sunburned while sitting here talking to you. Um... Yeah, so it's like a urban fantasy setting. It's pretty good. I don't enjoy reading the books, but I do enjoy them as audiobooks. So if you try reading them and you don't love them, try them as audiobooks because I just find Jim Butcher's writing as I'm reading it in my head to be kind of dry. But James Marsters does a really good job of bringing the character to life. And that's all I have for you this week. I hope you made something fantastic with your sticks and string, and I will see you next week. Sorry about all that randomness at the end right there. Aww. She does what she wants. Anyway, talk to you next week. Let's bye. See. You want to say bye? Bye.